Harry was just like the best man manager I've ever, ever, ever played under. And I just said, where are you, Harry? And he went, I'm manager at Portsmouth now. And I said, well, what are they like? And he went, they're fucking shit, son. <laughs> That's exactly how he went. He went, he's in Barbados. I've just been talking <laughs> to him. And he didn't say a word. I love Paul Merson. He is special to me. He'll always be special. And I'm great friends with him now. He's had his issues, and I probably treated him a bit differently to the rest of them. Understatement. Mm -hmm. But they didn't mind because he was special. Big tribute from Harry there. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I love Harry. I think he was unbelievable for me. Great manager, great man, and, and still a very good friend, which is which is nice. And I think that's what it's all about in football. If you stay friends with people, yeah. it's even more of a bonus. And I don't want to call Harry Redknapp a maverick. You know, I'm not I'm not sure Harry would like it. But he was a one-off, wasn't he? I mean, of all the managers you had, would would he be the one you enjoyed playing under the most? And and, and did he understand you best? I mean, the name of the game is winning stuff. You know, I, I won everything at Arsenal Bar in them yeah. days. It was the European Cup. So... George was very good, an unbelievable manager, an unbelievable manager, taught us the game, probably done our coaching badges on the pitch without even knowing we were doing our coaching badges. You know, if you go through the team, you know, we're talking 30 years ago now, Ian Wright's on telly, I'm on telly, Alan Smith's on telly, Perry Groves does the radio, you know, Lee Dixon does the telly, you know, Steve Bowles a manager, Tony Adams has been a manager, you know, all still involved, which is just shows you how good George was. But Harry, Harry was just like the best man manager I've ever, ever, ever played under. And I mean, in a man manager where you'd have thought he just finished playing himself. You know, he knew you, he knew how you were thinking, you knew how he was, you know, he'd just let you go out and play. But you had to go out and play. You know, he would say, right, just go out and do what you want. I'll get players around you, you know, get the ball to Merce, make runs, he'll find you the ball. But you had to do it. He'd soon let you know if you didn't do it. You know, he wasn't one of them who would go, oh, he's had a shit game, let's just leave. He would go mad at you in the dressing room. He'd pick you out and he'd go, that ain't good enough. You know, he was one of them. He wasn't, he was so strong as a manager. I've, people, When I hear people go, oh, wheeler, dealer, wheeler. He was definitely one of the best managers I played under. And I played under good, good managers good managers and I would definitely say he was up there without a doubt. He doesn't get the credit he deserves. 100% not. 100% not. You know, 100%. You know, he managed over a thousand games. I only not played the following year because I just found my standard of football and I just I just thought I was coming towards the end I didn't want to embarrass myself and I didn't, you know, and I know Harry would have wanted a bit more and I couldn't give that but I couldn't talk highly enough of the bloke. Honestly, Give me the best year in my footballing career, if I'm being honest, at Portsmouth. How did he persuade you to go there? And now, he rang me up. He said, you've just been released. I'd just been released by Villa. You know, couldn't get into Graham Taylor's team. And I understood he wanted legs in the team. And I understand that. And I was at home the next day and Harry rang me up. He said, is that Merce? I said, yeah, when it's Harry Redknapp. And I never talked to him before. And he said, uh, I'll be interested in bringing you down and we'll meet for a couple of years, son. And I just said, where are you, Harry? And he went, I'm manager at Portsmouth now. And I said, well, what are they like? And he went, they're fucking shit, son. That's exactly how he went. He went, He went. I've got rid of every one of them. I've kept Nigel Quasi. I've got 10 new players on free transfers. He said, I want you to come down, be the captain for a couple of years. We'll give it a right effing go. And I said, Harry, I have to stop you there, mate. I said, I'm living up in the Midlands now. I said, I'm not going to move down for two years. and definitely not traveling down every day at my age. I had that at Middlesbrough. He said, I tell you what, son, don't work Mondays, don't work Wednesdays, don't work Fridays but you fucking make sure you turn it on a Saturday. And I went, I'll be down in the morning, Harry. And I, I, I loved it, honestly. I could not talk highly enough of the club, the players, the fans. And I, I had my best ever game I ever played in. I played, I think, 700 games. The best game I ever played in my whole footballing career was at Millwall Way. We won 5-0 and I got a standing ovation from the Millwall fans. Like Harry brought me off with five minutes to go and they all stood up, every one of them. And that's some going. I've played at Millwall a few times. And after the game, I was getting in my car and an old bloke come up to me about 70 odd years of age. And he said, he said, I've been coming to this ground since I was five, son. I've never seen anybody get that. Yeah. And I always look out for their scores today. Always look out for Millwall scores. It's weird. Yeah. But I always look out right. for their scores. I can't let you go, Merce, without telling us the story about when you decide you want to have a break in the sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, th this is Harry all over because we, we, me and Tim Sherwood were talking about this the other day with a couple of the lads. 
I was a nerd when I played football. I was a nerd. I was I was so I, I, I was so addicted to football that I would always look at the scores like we beat them, you know, and if they get beat by them, we gain two points. If we drop two here, and we played we played a uh, we played Man United in the FA Cup third round, and we were top of the championship they were top of the prem and they beat us 4-1 it wasn't a 4-1 game but they beat us 4-1 so straight after the game come in the dressing room I look at the scores and I've seen that the team that we're going to be playing in three weeks time have just won in the FA Cups and I know now not next week not the week after but the week after we ain't got a game so I go straight home and book a holiday to Barbados so I play the following Saturday the following Saturday after the game I go and see Harry I said Harry do us a favour I said, can I go into Tony Adams' treatment centre for, for gambling? I'm struggling at the moment. and We ain't got a game next week. Sounds so are still in the cup. He said, not a problem, son. You go into a treatment and I'll see you a week Monday. So I fly to Barbados the next day. So I bump into a bloke on, in, in Barbados the next day. We're having a chat. Do you think you'll go up this and that? I said, yeah, this. So he leaves. I don't know, but he's one of Harry's best mates. So he goes straight back to his... Villa and rings Harry. He's gone, hello, Harry, how are you? I'm good, Michael, how are you? He went, yeah, good. He's, Harry's gone, what have you been up to? He went, I've just been one of your players. And Harry's gone, who's that, Michael? He went, Paul Merson. He went, fucking hell, Michael. He went, what's wrong with you? <laughs> he went, what do you mean? He went, he's, he's in Tony Adams' treatment centre. He went, he's in Barbados. I've just been <laughs> talking to him. And he didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. And I talked to Tim Sherwood the other day and he was telling the story. And he said, he was in training and Harry come up to him. He said, do you know where Merce is? He went, what do you mean? He went, where is he? And he, went, and he said, I'm not a stitch. He said, I don't know. He went, well, I can tell you where he is. He's in Barbados. He's not in Tony Adams. He's in Barbados. He said, what are you going to do? He went, I'm not going to do anything. He went, what do you mean? He went, well, he's playing the way he's playing. Let him do what he wants. And he never said a word. And that's what you call man management. He could have come back, find me two, I could have come back, find me two weeks wages and he could have lost me. He might have, I might have thought, oh, you know what? I'm not having this. I do hope you're enjoying the show. I just want to tell you that you can follow us at, at football's greatest pod on Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. And search for football's greatest pod to find us on X. How, how difficult did you find man management when you had your management spell at, at Walsall? Was it tough? It was tough. It was tough. I, I was drinking and gambling very, very much at the time. And it was just, I, that's my biggest, that's my only regret in football. My only regret is I thought I'd be a good manager. I thought I'd be a good football manager. I, I worked under a lot of managers. I know the game. I know football. And I'm addicted to football. And I thought I'd be a good manager. And I failed miserably. I should have played myself more. I don't think I lost the game when I was playing. Not because I was a great player then. But I just had experience and could tell the younger players where to go. And yeah, I should have got sacked a lot, lot, lot quicker than what I did, if I'm being honest. The man, the owner of the club was very kind. He, you know, he tried his hardest to make me succeed, but right place, wrong time, in my opinion. Great club, but drinking and gambling, no good. Now, thanks for watching Football's Greatest on YouTube. But can I ask you please to hit that subscribe button? That way you won't miss any of our future episodes and we have some great guests coming up on the show.